The Lagos and SARS report has been submitted. The government will be releasing a white paper, but there are multiple controversies over the leaked report. This morning, we are asking, what's next? Arawa Consultative Forum describes killings and kidnappings on Kaduna Abuja Highway as shameful and unacceptable. The forum spokesman will be talking to us this morning. We'll also be taking a look at what we have in the dailies and reviewing them with the novelists. We're glad to have you join us on Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonia. And I am Messi Boko. It's good to have you join us this beautiful morning. As usual, we set off with our top trending and, uh, of course, we talk about the things that have actually generated conversation in the last 24 hours in different spaces. Uh, so this morning, well, what do we start off with? Uh, Mercy, it is actually uh, a thing that uh, is giving so many people sleepless nights. That's on the spirit of insecurity in Nigeria. And right now, the ever busy Kaduna, Kaduna Abuja uh, Expressway is in the news again as travelers uh, are being attacked along that particular route. And uh, we are asking again, what do we need to do to ensure that people could actually move from point A to point B without having to think of um, uh, me being kidnapped? being attacked and all of that when are we going to get our roads secure mercy well it is not just about having our roads secured uh, it's the issue of security across the entire mm. uh, you know states of the federation now like I always say it feels like as government every other time that we elect people to represent us uh, those who are elected to represent us fail uh, you know, they forget the primary responsibility, uh, the real reason why they were elected. Mm. Now, the major across the entire world, I mean the globe, the number one priority of every government is the protection of lives and properties. And, property, yes. and the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, stipulates that already. That, you know, the welfare of the people and the welfare would include security. Mm. And we keep saying this. It's, it's quite unfortunate. Now, you talking about the, um, you know, Abuja Kaduna mm. Highway, this is not the very first time. It is not. It is not. You know, we, we had like four years ago in 2019, we've yeah. had several kidnappings and incidents on that road. And over the years, we've also seen, I remember the time where you had Hakim, who was the former IGP of, I mean, the IG of police at the time. There was uh, a deployment of, you know, tactical team on that particular road. Yes. And according to, you know, uh, according to the Inspector General of Police at that time, it was supposed to be a permanent thing. Mm. So we're supposed to have, you know, th th had, they had constituted a technical team that's going to be permanent on that road. But, uh, but I, invariably I, now, I, there's, no, there's no permanence on that particular road because from look of things, uh, you know, but security personnel were deployed to that particular road. When they felt that um, the situation had come down to some extent, uh, you know, they had to retreat. And right now, that particular road is actually becoming a menace to the extent that people now even want to use alternative routes. Uh, that, that, that's the train. But uh, not so long ago also... And that that's why people train blame that on the train. Was also, you know, you know mm. attacked as well. So, so the, the point now is this. Uh, we, we say that government is a continuum. We say that we ought to have continuity in government. So I have been, you know, a bit worried that if government over the years have actually reacted to, you know, the issue of the Kaduna Highway, because this is not the very first time mm. we're having that incident on the road. And then how come it's not sustained? What's, what, what's, what's, because government should be, you know, um, there should be some element of uh, sustainability in governance mm -hmm. and all of that. So it, it's quite unfortunate. Now, it, it, also, it brings us back to the fact that, yes, we're talking about Kaduna. What is the state government doing? Mm -hmm. And you want to begin to say, okay, is it a federal road or not a federal road? But the point is security is everyone's concern. Yes, and it, it should be, you know, the concern of um, every other person. But mm -hmm. another issue, again, that some persons will probably have raised, that will have raised over the time is, if you look at us with the fight against insecurity, you find out that we like intelligence. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was looking at the videos over time. I started, you know, doing a review of some of the videos uh, that have actually surfaced on that road because I haven't plied that road in a very long time. And I'm mm -hmm. not sure I want to, you know, it's not even that road. If you can avoid it, it's best you no, do. No, no, that, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But you find out that you have bushes to the left. These are deserted areas. Right. Mm. And it's expected that even if you want to have now, if you're going to have some, um, I'm not a security expert, by the way, but I'm just saying, common sense. Like some, some uh, you, you know, because it, you, you can't even have the checkpoints on the road because to the left, to the right, the you know, you have, yeah, there are bushes all over. 
So you should devise another means of tackling these people. They can't be smarter than the government. No, they can't. They can't be smarter than the Nigerian government no, and the Nigerian can't. security architecture. And again, so yesterday it was uh, an attack along uh, you know, the Kaduna Abuja Expressway. Uh, I mean, how secure are other roads? Because uh, we are approaching uh, the U tide, and a lot of people were doing serious travel in this period. Lots of people who cannot ordinarily afford that, you know, to take flights, you know, would also want to use the road because a lot of people, like my Igbo brothers too, want to travel down down east uh, to, you know, commemorate the holidays uh, with their loved ones. So, so how secure are our roads? We have to talk beyond that, so just securing the uh, Kaduna Abuja Highway. Let's talk about right now about how all of the roads across the federal, the expressways are actually secure so that Nigerians can actually want to decide to travel. Sometimes you just want to go the, the road trip, you know, and just see things and explore and see the, the beautiful vegetation to see how Nigeria is blessed with a vast, uh, you know, agriculture and all of that. But then again, you'd think twice to even take or embark on such um, journeys because uh, you might not even meet, you know, your destination at the end of the day. Well, like I, I mentioned earlier on, security is not just limited to one part of the country. No, so not, uh, not, the issue of security cuts across the entire. Mm. I mean, let me give you a little, um, you know, a little brief. Now, yeah, when yeah. I, I was still back then in, you know, the university, mm. I schooled in the University of Calabar. And usually my, my family's busier, you know, in Lagos. And, you know, I stopped traveling when I, I stopped traveling via road when I was in my 100 or 200 level. I stopped because of, you know, my one or two encounter with, you know, rob, rob, armed robbers on the road. It was really scary. Mm. Trust me, you don't even want to be in that situation. All right. And so, um, you know, I'm just saying that the roads are not safe anymore. They're not. All right, we understand that there is um, um, a soundtrack to that particular report. Let's just um, take the SOT and we'll come back and talk some other trends and stories. Stay with us. This is life kidnapping. This is kidnapping life in blood daylight. <coughs> Thank God for our life on the 21st of November 2001. Thank you, God, for saving us. Nigga, my Jesus. Thank you, God. <coughs> life now. Correct. Can, you can hear the gunshots. What is faithful? Can you hear the gunshots? It's leader. What is faithful? Correct. You can hear the gunshots. What is You can hear the gunshots. Scaring them away. You can hear the gunshots. Life. Life gunfire going on. What is faithful? Life fire, gunfire going on. Yes, sir. The pass away. They don't care. They have kidnapped some people. What you have? La ila in the law. Oh God! Let's ask some people. So someone is being shot. Is oh shit! Right inside his car. Oh God! So he's up in life on our way back. Oh shit! He's been shot. He's been shot. <coughs> Hold on! Into the Into the Yeah! Into the knee, God! What did I tell you? See, give me a car! Hey, it's Gabo Simu! They carry our friend. Hey, they don't carry our friend. Hey, see our friend. Hey, Jesus! I tell you, say this car! Hey! Send me a sofa, come on to one! Jesus, they carry our friend! Oh, God! Oh, God of creation! Oh God. There was some harrowing scene there, you know, travelers are being attacked along the Kaduna Abuja Highway just yesterday. We just really need to put our uh, uh, act in order and ensure that uh, Nigerians can actually, you know, move around uh, the nation, you know, without having to think about um, if they would actually get to their destination. Another trend than just, uh, you know, this time around is uh, China issuing um, a, a travel advisory to their, uh, you know, so the citizens are advising them to avoid some risk or risky areas uh, in Africa. Specifically, they mentioned uh, they mentioned Kenya. Uh, they also mentioned um, Nigeria. But mercy, uh, the thing that they are pointing out right now is that um, their citizens are actually being kidnapped in some of those uh, you know countries that they have listed. And unfortunately, again, Nigeria is actually in the list. So it brings us back to the issue of you know security, and we'll, see, we'll mm. continue to talk about it now. Uh, I, I constantly hear us say we, we want to have, uh, you know, foreign investors. We want people to come invest. 
it's just basic. It's basic economics that mm -hmm. uh, before you can actually achieve X, Y, Z, you have to take care of X, Y, Z. Now, security is a very huge, huge subject. Mm -hmm. It encompasses the entire economy. If you can take care of the security situation of every country, then you have actually solved, you know, almost half of the problem of that country. Because mm. first of all, this would attract foreign investors. Yes, People would. can actually come to your country and want to do business, right? They will feel safe. Local investors also. People can want to move from particular. Right now, do you know that there are some areas that you would not want to go to? There are some states you don't really, want to go ordinarily, to. Ordinarily, as a Nigerian, I would not even want to travel to some states uh, in, uh, in the federal region. You know, region. Be, be, because of the of concern. those coming, uh, you know, from outside the country. So, so it brings us back to, you know, one and the same thing. Now, unfortunately, because I was going to say unfortunately, I mean, we are the giant of Africa. But we should, we should be, you know... Um, Show leading by example. It's quite unfortunate. I'm feeling that at this point in time, we should have been able to address the issue of security in Africa so that we can is, begin to you know, is. Is uh, have really, a trickle-down effect to other... Yes, you know, because at the end of the day, Africa is continent. actually losing. Everyone knows how, you know, how big and how massive you know, the Chinese uh, you know, contribution is to the developing world. And um, Nigeria, uh, you know, for instance, uh, actually is one of the beneficiaries of such um, you know, investments you know, into Africa. Because uh, if you look at our rail system, if you look at our roads, uh, most of the contractors, uh, the, the federal government use they are from China. But if there's uh, people who come, you know, freely, you know, willingly to Nigeria to want to come and invest or to want to come and work in the country are not safe and they're being kidnapped for ransom and for other purposes, you know, at the end of the day, our economy will be the worst hit. At the end of the day, our foreign reserves will also dwindle over time. And before we know it, um, we'll still be talking about uh, huge debts in future. Mm, and, and, and so, so we're just still saying one and the same thing at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Yes. I'm hoping that, you know, government across the board will pay attention to this particular issue. It's quite unfortunate that the government of, uh, you know, uh, President Mohamed Buhari came into power. One of the, you know, key issues that this government said that we're going to address is the issue of security. Mm. But right now, I, I really don't know. I can't say I really don't know where we are. You mm. know, the security situation of the country Mercy, is, is it nothing is, to write home about. No, it's not at all. It's nothing to write home about. Uh, but the, the, the issue for me is that over time, we, we have um, talked about security, all of the issues, uh, what we need to do proactively. It's as though all of uh, these input, all of these advice, you know, have fallen on deaf ears as if we know what to do, but we don't have um, the willpower or the body language is not actually showing that we want to actually get or just nip this particular issue in the bud. So, so, really so, so it just it. brings me back, you know, to some of the conversations I, I usually have off air. And because it's tiring. Mm. Uh, this is not the first time we're talking about no, it's not. because it's we're not. going to be having a conversation about, you know, the uh, security of, uh, uh, on the show today. Know, yes. It's not the first time this is happening. It's not the second time. And Nigerians are very intelligent people. We can't say we don't know. We can't say we don't have the resources. But like mm. you've rightly mentioned, the body language, are we willing to, for mm. whatever reason, it could be for personal interest and what have you. Uh, but the point is we have refused to actually address the situation the way, I mean, you know, to step in and do what we should do. And so what do you expect? You can continue to do the same thing over and over and again expect and expect a different, different result. result. Not at I all. mean, it will be tagged as, you know, madness. Mm. And, and that's the case with us. So um, I, I, really, I really don't know. It, it, it's quite tiring. So we would say, um, you know, change the security chiefs, change all of this, change all of that. And we know exactly what we need to do. We know exactly. We know, know the people. We're not doing we, we know the we people. We, we know the people who are committing this crime. Oh, sure, you know we know the people who are committing this crime. Mm. You, you, because you need to understand that this crime and all of this. I mean, the They're kidnappings by humans, and of course, these they people did not fall from the sky. That exactly. That they are not spirits. Mm. They are human beings. They are our brothers, our sisters, our uncles. They are our neighbors who are perpetrating all of this evil, and we know them. And for some reason, we have chosen, you know, to be part of, you know. That conspiracy and keep quiet. Mm. And even and when they have been reported, way. nothing has been done. Arrest so, not being uh, made at the end of the day. Even if arrest made at the end of the day, nothing, no persecution, and that they just go home and they are you know, reintegrated into the society. Another sad story that uh, is trending online right now is the popular uh, Nollywood uh, actor who just died at the age of um, 63, uh, popularly known as uh, Baba Sui. I don't know how much you follow Nollywood. I don't know how much you follow the Yoruba uh, movie uh, space, but he is actually a, or was actually a very popular one, and uh, he played some sort of 
comical roles. And sometimes I try to understand, uh, you know, those those things that he says, you know, in his part, because sometimes they're just like completely adrift from the main uh, uh, theme of uh, the movie. Sometimes it, bring, it brings some sort of comic relief, you know, to, 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 to the movies that he has done and that he will be actually sorely missed. He died at the age of 63. But I saw a video online where his son was lamenting that um, uh, not much was done, uh, so much uh, for the dad and that he was sick and um, he, they could not really get all the helps um, that they uh, were sick. So, so first of all, um, I'm not really, I can't say that I have really been That's very... Him. Uh, yes, I, of course I know him, yeah. uh, you know, but I can say I have been very abreast with that um, uh, genre of uh, okay. film, right? Yeah. But of course I know him. Uh, I've actually seen him in one or two of those films and comic, and he would be yeah. greatly missed because he is uh, a fantastic, a great, he was, uh, we have yeah. to speak in the past now, I mean, he was a great, great, fantastic he actor. He contributed a lot to the industry. Yes, and he, he would did. be sorely missed. Yes. Uh, for me, I, I'm beginning to think that... Um, it's time that we begin to celebrate people. Usually we get to talk about people alive. when they're alive and all of their achievements. Yeah. And that's why I'm really glad that during their Freema, was it during their Freema? Or one of these awards, I can't remember. Afraid, uh, Olu Jacobs uh, was given a lot of course, Olu Jacobs award. was actually, yeah. you know, recognized. Mm. Uh, because we're, I feel like the culture for us is we get to celebrate people when they're no more. So mm. we get to tell them beautiful stuff about themselves and how much they have done and how great. But I'm thinking that it's important that we imbibe the culture of celebrating people while they're alive and, and let them know how much they mean to us as a people, as an individual, mm. as a state, as a country. Mm. And what have you? Because when the dead is there, they're dead and There's gone, and they have about. no business even if you with want to remember they But of course, great we would always they you know, recount the fact them. that he's done great stuff. Talking about the fact that he didn't really get help, mm. I have seen that that has become a pattern. A trend in Nollywood. It has right. become, it's not even a trend, Only it's not limited to Nollywood. So, mm. I mean, some days back you saw Baba Fryo, right? Uh, oh, ranting. Wow. He went on this very... Just saying the entertainment <laughs> world, that is, yeah, in Nigeria. Rants, uh, talking about, about the fact the 250 million largest and the how... Uh, David, though, did not uh, remember him as it is. So, but I, I'm thinking that, first of all, um, this body should be able to come up with some form of welfare. I, I don't know how to say I was going to say that because you know, they, have, they have several gigs. They have the AG and Actors Guild of Nigeria. They have um, Antap that actually controls the Yoruba uh, movie and all of that. But they should have some sort of uh, maybe medical insurance, you know, so these um, actors who have actually contributed to our entertainment, you know, can have some sort of, uh, you know, sucker, you know, to fall back to when they are not as active as they used to be and that maybe when they are all falling down you know, to sickness or something so they can actually have some sort of a no, fallback. Apart, apart from that, I'm also thinking that it's it's important that we pay attention to our health. We, now, we should, we, we, which is which is very, very In important. time as well. Uh, as, as, as long as you are leaving, you're, you're mm. making all of this, you should pay attention to your health. Everyone Great. is on this table. No one is actually left out. You know, because I feel like we live in a climb where we don't pay attention to anything. No, we, we don't. don't. We don't pay attention just, to what we eat, the no, things we that we drink. It's when it has actually come, so when push has come to shove, that we to start running hell to scale. So, uh, for the leaving, it's important because I, I feel like we need to constantly leverage on people's experience. Uh, when you I say agree. I uh, agree more. experience is it's the, the best, best teacher. teacher, I'm thinking that we need to move away from that experience experience. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at the trend right now, we look at the pattern, you know, everyone falls ill. I'm not saying, I mean, it's normal, but if we begin to pay attention to, to the leaving, pay attention to our health while your life, as long as you're making that money, you need to also understand that health is wealth and without your health, there's no way you're going to become a great and fantastic actor or broadcaster as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, importance to the health. And before me, I, I, li I, I just drift a little bit with the fact that we seem to have um, some sort of that entitlement mentality. So it feels like, oh, mm. you know, people should come to my aid. I'm not saying people cannot be generous. I mean, but let's not make it, let's not make it You're look responsible like, for your own life. So, but before now, so you would also say that we have support system, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I, mean, I, I constantly talk about the support system. The family is then that's one. why I, and then I you have the church, you have the organization, plan, some sort of you have the deal, savings and all, and all of, that. of that. Yeah. All right, uh, that's as much as we can take on um, top trending on the breakfast uh, this morning. You could actually just go online and follow all of those stories and uh, you know make uh, informed decisions uh, for yourself. We'll be taking a break, and when we'll come back, we're looking at what the papers are saying this morning to join us again.